Hey everybody, Josh here. Welcome back to the channel. I help people get jobs in IT and cybersecurity if you didn't know, so definitely subscribe if you're into that. And today's video, I'm going to be answering a viewer's comment. It's a really simple one. Um, hello, I'm joining the Navy with IT as a job. How do I go from there to a cloud engineer? What should I study to easily transition? So this is a, a fun question. Uh, it's gonna be a fun answer. So basically, like if you join the Navy um, doing IT, I believe you're automatically going to get a top secret security clearance, assuming you're in good moral standing and like there's no problems or anything like that. So that is already like really strong on your on your resume, right? Because um, both Amazon and Microsoft um, care about security clearances because they have like GovCloud and all of that where they require some people to have security clearance. Um, even Google has this, right? A lot, like most of those big tech companies have need for security clearance. And the fact that you have secure, security clearance is going to you know make you be able to easily get paid more money. Um, so to answer your question, um, basically think about the job that you want to get. Imagine like you want to be like whatever cloud security architect or cloud engineer or something. Um, basically, just look at this employability framework. Um, this is everything you need to really care about when it comes to breaking into a field or getting like a certain job or something. So if you think about the job that you want to get in relation to the employability framework, uh, just plug in like certain stuff to make yourself really strong. So I, I assume through you know your time in active duty in the Navy, I, well, I assume you're active duty. If you're not, um, you know, it doesn't really matter. Um, you're going to be kind of filling out that experience section anyways, because you're going to be working on defense systems, doing IT stuff. So you're going to get some nice experience, uh, which is good because that's kind of the hard thing that you, that's kind of the hard thing to, to get on the employability framework because you can't just go out and like get it. Somebody has to hire you and you have to work. So that's taken care of. So in terms of like your credentials, like the best thing that you can do, in my opinion, um, I would, to be honest with you, I would just probably... Um, pick a degree from WGU that looks the most fun to get. So I know you said you want to work in cloud, but I would consider like either getting computer science if you're okay with those extra mathematics and programming. If you're not, I'd consider the network engineering and security degree. It's slightly more rigorous than a normal IT degree because it has, I think it has some like the first discrete mathematics and some programming in there. Um, it's just a really good degree. If not that one, look at the actual cloud degree. It's probably easier than the network engineering and security degree. And just, just pick one of those degrees and just work through it. Um, the actual cybersecurity uh, and information assurance degree, I have like a full guide on that with strategies for every single class on how to finish that degree in under a year. So you can check out that video and then you're gonna get a bunch of certifications like whichever degree you get from WGU, you're gonna get a bunch of certifications from it. So. Aside from that, um, after you finish your degree or before, I, I would recommend getting CISSP as well. Um, that's going to pair with your security clearance really well because a lot of, uh, I'm assuming you're, you're gonna wanna use your clearance after you get out of the Navy. I would recommend it anyway. Um, I would definitely get CISSP because CISSP, um, if you look up like DOD 8140 or DOD 8570, it will show like different kind of tiers of jobs that require like uh, different levels of certification. Um, the two main ones are IAT, which is Information Assurance Technical, and IAM, which is Information Assurance Management. If you get CISSP, it covers you up to like level three, like the top level for both of those things. So if you if you have like your clearance and then you have a degree and a bunch of all those sorts that come with the degree, and you have CISSP that maxes out your IAT and IAM. And you have a bunch of uh, like tech experience, like defense tech experience from within the Navy. Pretty much do like whatever you want to do um, when you get out. Um, but to further, to kind of further polish yourself and like uh, prepare yourself for when you're getting out, um, on top of your degree and credentials, just make sure you have some really good projects um, on your resume and on your portfolio. I'll, I'll put a resume link in the description that you can kind of use. Um, if you want, and you can also look on YouTube, search like Josh Matacor Security Projects, Josh Matacor Portfolio, and you'll kind of figure out, or you'll see some videos that teach you how to make a good portfolio and how to like put projects on those. Um, I also have like a, a really good course that will, um, it teaches you how to like build like, we, we build like a miniature SOC in the cloud in Azure, and we leverage like a lot of different cloud services as well. Um, like we use Azure primarily, well, 
completely we use Azure. So we use Azure Sentinel to build a SIM. We use um, Log Analytics Workspace to aggregate all of our logs. And like we get a lot of attack traffic on the internet on purpose because we expose stuff to the internet, aggregate those logs. We use KQL to query them. And it's just like a big lab practicing incident response. So you could, you could do that. You can get the course or you can emulate it on your own to kind of polish your, you know, your resume for projects and stuff like this. But um, you might have, you know, enough experience, you know, going in the Navy, doing like Navy, like defense IT and like all this stuff where, um, you know, you might be able to get away with, you know, getting the job you want without doing like a portfolio and stuff. Um, if you look at the employability framework, it just depends, right? So if you're missing something, you can make up for it with somewhere else. But it sounds like you're, by the time you get out, your education and certification and experience is going is going to be really really strong um so you know you can make it stronger with a portfolio or you can just you know square away your resume and then just start applying to those big tech companies that require clearance and i will say um if you want to if you want to give yourself an edge when you get out when you're searching for jobs just search for like if you search on indeed for like ability to maintain or you just search for like um the word clearance or like top secret clearance or something like this or you go to like um i think it's called clearance jobs or like danger zone jobs or like vectrix vectrix.com or something like these kind of job sites that only um people with clearances can uh, apply to jobs uh, it's just going to give you an edge and there's going to be like less competition and everything. So um, I hope this helps. I talked quite kind of a lot in this video, but uh, it's kind of exciting because you're you're positioned to be like really good, like when you come out of the Navy, essentially. And you have like a lot of time to complete all of that stuff. So, you know, degree, CISSP, project portfolio, take advantage of your security clearance and then you should be like good to go. Uh, I hope this helps.